chemistry states the more energy you put into a bond the harder it is to break hello everyone this is arpita tripathi welcoming you all back to my channel and your very own learning platform the world of chemistry so keep watching my videos and subscribe my channel to never miss an update In this module we will dig out some information regarding chemical equation like its definition characteristics the way of representing an equation and finally the steps in which we can balance an equation So what is a chemical equation Let's answer it It is a set of symbols and formulas representing the reactants and products that is the molecules present in the chemical reaction and it also represents the conditions required in the particular reaction so basically it is a way to represent chemical reactions on paper now let's know what are the characteristics of a chemical equation the first one is the equation must represent the known facts that is whatever amount of substances taken additional conditions required everything must be represented or well explained in the chemical equation second is the equation must contain the correct formulas for the reactants and products the third is the law of conservation of mass must be satisfied and the law states that atoms can neither be created nor be destroyed in an ordinary chemical reaction only the thing happens is rearrangement of the atoms so there must be same number of atoms on both sides of the equation the next thing that must come in our mind is how to write or represent a chemical equation here you can see an example first of all this one is the reactant side of the equation and this is the product side and all the substances or molecules written here are in their own symbols and formulas in between reactants and products the arrow that is present it represents or it is often read as yields or gives rise to and whatever additional conditions like heat pressure temperature catalyst etc are supposed to be written on this arrow like as this reaction is of photosynthesis so here the additional conditions required are sunlight and chlorophyll so these conditions will be written over the arrow in the bracket we can see g l s written what are these actually these represents the physical state of the particular substance and when any gas is released instead of writing g it is marked as an up arrow and if any precipitate is formed as a product then it is marked as a down arrow here in this equation you can see 2 6 12 they are written actually these numbers represent the number of atoms of each element present and this 6 it represents the number of mole molecules of a particular substance so likewise we can take another example here we can see iron is reacting with hydrochloric acid 
to give iron to chloride and liberation of hydrogen gas occurs so this equation can be read as iron when reacts with two molecules of hydrochloric acid iron 2 chloride is formed along with the liberation of hydrogen gas or we can also read it as iron when reacts with hydrochloric acid it gives rise to iron 2 chloride and hydrogen gas now let's see the steps that we should follow in order to balance a chemical equation first of all we'll have to write down the chemical equation for example mg plus o2 gives mgo second step is write the number of atoms of every element of the reactant and product site so there is only one ac oxygen atom which is more in the reactant site step 3 is balance the compound which has maximum number of atoms so for this multiply the product side by 2 to equalize oxygen atoms on both sides so 2 mgo fourth step is after selecting the compound with a big formula balance the highest number of atoms then balance the rest of the atoms so now the number of atoms of magnesium is more on the product side so for this reason 2 has been multiplied to magnesium on the rea reactant side and finally recheck whether the atoms on both the sides are balanced or not and here we can see on the reactant side magnesium has two atoms on the product side magnesium is having two atoms in the reactant side oxygen is having two atoms in the product side also it has two atoms so finally we can say that the equation is completely balanced let's take another example suppose i will take c3h8 reacts with oxygen to give carbon dioxide gas and water so here first of all we'll have to see the number of atoms of each element present on both the sides so in the reactant side number of carbon atoms present is 3 hydrogen is 8 and oxygen is 2 in the product side number of carbon atoms is 1 hydrogen is 2 and oxygen is 3 so now as hydrogen atom is having more number of atoms in the reactant side so to balance it first of all we will multiply 4 to water on the product side so now the number of hydrogen atoms became 8 and they are balanced along with it the number of oxygen atom also changed and it became 6 now we can see the number of carbon atoms in the reactant side is 3 and in the product side it is 1 so to make it balance first we will multiply 3 to co2 now the number of carbon atoms also became 3 and they are balanced the number of oxygen atom now became is 3 into 2 6 plus 4 so it become finally 10 and to equalize it in the reactant side we will multiply 5 with oxygen atom and now it also became 10 so finally the result that we get got is c3h8 plus 5o2 
gives 3 CO2 plus 4 H2O and if we see the number of each atom on both the sides carbon is having 3 atoms hydrogen is having 8 atom and oxygen is having 10 atoms so atoms on each side are equal that's why the equation is completely balanced hope this video will be helpful for all thanks for watching and have a great day ahead